that one. So this week I'm like, and I always go by the odds. I just pick the biggest odds. I figure those guys know what they're doing. I'll pick the Orleans at home. Got a commercial in my warehouse last week. And I had such sensitive eyes. It's like, how do I not? <laughs> now how about now are we good It's sundown in Texas, and the Mustangs are herding up.
This is Mustang football. It's sundown in Texas, and the Mustangs are herding up. The Coach Mike Alexander Show is presented by the Kim Assad Group. What we want to do with the Assad Group is just develop a team that is, is known for their integrity, for working hard and supporting their clients and just giving the best level of service because that's what clients want. Hi, I'm Kim Assad with Compass Real Estate. I've lived in Texas since I was 11 years old and we've lived in Grapevine since 2002. Grapevine is a great area to live in. We love the downtown area. It's like an old Western movie with log cabins. Um, it's known as the Christmas capital of Texas, and we're really proud of our city. We love living here. Our kids grew up in the school district, Grapevine Colleyville ISD. We love their education and have been proud of just the relationships and friendships they've made in the community here. There's been all walks of life, from lots of stay-at-home moms to working parents that do a lot of volunteering for the schools. And that's really kind of how I've, I've met a lot of my clients is volunteering in the schools, whether I'm the team mom or um, in the Booster Club or volunteered with NCL National Charity League or with my son through Second Saturdays. We've had a great time just meeting so many people in the community. I've been in real estate since 2000. I'm actually a civil engineer by degree, I married a civil engineer, and then I got my real estate license back in 2000 and just have loved it ever since. I love working with people and just the relationship. Real estate is really a relationship business. It's about developing relationships, somebody that trusts you and that um, we can help them accomplish their, their real estate goals. I was a broker on my own before and I joined Compass because I just love the image and the support that I have of Compass. I mean, our ads look so professional, our listings look so desirable, and it just helps the client out because I can get their homes sold faster. But I have the Assad Group under Compass. I've grown that with two agents initially that have been great agents. And then now my family's even joined. So my husband, who um, joined Compass about a year ago, and then now my, my son. You know, I just want to welcome your business. And if you have any real estate needs, whether you're looking for a rental, a purchase, to sell your house, or an investment property, just call me. The Coach Mike Alexander Show is produced by Tradio. Now, here's Carnes and Coach with this week's recap and DNA players. Hello, Mustang Nation. Matt Carnes, Grapevine Booster here. Week four, Team 102 season of the Coach Mike Alexander Show. Special thanks again to Kim Assad for having us. Special thanks to Trey Bell and Tradio for producing us. And we are live here at Bottle Cap Alley. We've got a lot of Mustangs in the house. Let's hear it from our Mustangs here. And as always, we have Coach Mike Alexander for his show. Welcome to your show, Coach. 
Hey, thanks, Matt. Good to be here. So coming off a big homecoming win, last week it was a 72-10 to 10 win. Got a lot to talk about with that. But uh, I'll let you just kind of start it off and talk about homecoming, the big win, and all that. Well, you know, Matt, like I told you last week leading up to the game, you know, uh, it's a special thing, homecoming at Grapevine. Uh, we have such a distinguished alumni base that care so much about, you know, the, our community, our school, and uh, it means a lot to a lot of people. Our number one job was to win the game, mission accomplished. Uh, the alumni got to enjoy their, uh, their time. They had the uh, state championship team from 1996, got to have a reunion. So, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a win for everybody. Well, we moved to 3-2 and two overall. We're 2-0 and oh in district. So that's a good, uh, a good start. We now won three in a row. Running back one and two were out. Didn't seem to matter. Everybody else filled in. Tell us about the team and what it took to just get you the win the way you did. Well, I, you know, I was more proud of how we won. Um, I, we had good players. We got, care, we got kids that care a whole lot about each other. They care a lot about being Mustangs and uh, representing well. Uh, so I was most impressed with how we won. You know, a lot of times in games like that uh, can get out of hand early. You tend to flounder around a little bit, not play well. But our guys did a good job. And uh, they, from start to finish, they just, they just took care of business. Well, a week ago it started off like a track meet against Creekview. And it looked like this one might start off like a track meet this week when number one went right around left end for about 80 yards in no time at all. But everybody recovered. They didn't let it get to him. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, that kid's – he's talented. I mean, he got away from us last year a couple times. Uh, he's got a lot of speed. Um, you take away two plays, though, and they're minus yardage on – yards per play pretty much you know so we did a good job overall I was proud of our guys from start to finish well talk about a special week you have the homecoming parade you get to have the homecoming activities at halftime which one of your Mustangs wound up being crowned the homecoming king yes, but you also had the 25 year anniversary of team from 1996 that won the state championship put on a good show tell us what you thought about having those guys back in the house and it's special, you know. Uh, there's not a lot of schools that can say they've been playing football for 102 years. There's not a lot of schools in the Metroplex that can say that they have a parade like we do down Main Street. I mean, that's special. Um, it led me to talking a lot about on Thursday with our team meeting, just gratitude. Uh, gratitude of living in this community, gratitude of being a Mustang, gratitude for each other's teammates. So it was just a great week of our guys just getting a chance to pause and just having gratitude for all the great things they have in their life. Well, speaking of that, Breakfast of Champions, which we talk about a lot here, men of the community, you need to be there 7 o'clock Friday morning. We got to hear from a former state champion here in Grapevine, Cole Farden, talked about what it looked like behind the scenes when they won their state championship. was not pretty to start. They had to overcome a lot of adversity. He talked about the failures that ultimately led to successes. A lot to gain from that, a lot that these kids can learn. As I've always said, the greatest thing about youth sports is how much these kids are going to learn about the rest of their life and how to deal with things. Cole talked about that a lot. What did you take out of his message? You know, Matt, football's always been to me like a microcosm of life. Never do we go into a game where everything works as planned. You know, there's always ups and downs. Uh, throughout the game, you get knocked on your back. You got to get back up. And uh, for Cole to stand there, you know, as a grown man and talk to our boys and tell them the adversity that he experienced in football and how it helped him overcome things throughout the rest of his life, um, it's just encouraging that the message that I'm trying to give the boys, you know, they're hearing from other people. It does make, uh, make a difference, and I think it's great for the boys to hear that. Again, men of the community, you need to be there. Before we go into the DNA players, let's talk about the freshman and JV teams. Well, uh, Matt, the freshmen are on a two-game win streak. So uh, they had a good game last week against Decatur. Um, we had to pick that game up late. We were supposed to play Highland Park, and for some reason they had to bail on us. 
Fortunately, we found Decatur, and they came out to Mustang Panther Stadium, and we won it in a thriller. It was uh, great to see our guys keep getting better and improving. So uh, that's been encouraging. Well, good. Well, we got some DNA players of the week. Been around Mustang football at all. You know, there's six DNA traits that everybody gets or players get awarded each week, as I should say. Let's meet our DNA players of the week. All right, we're going to bring up Sammy Kelly first. Sammy was our attitude player of the week. You see him right here. All right, so Sammy, he's a sophomore on our football team, plays wide receiver. Um, Sammy, you had a big game, man. You're our leading receiver. Uh, talk to us about a couple of the big plays you had. Well, on a few of them. <laughs> That's what, the first one I had was a whip route. And it's, I've had to learn a lot of the routes for H this week, learning a new position and everything. So I got that route down and turned in and broke it back out. It was open. Yes, and my QB is always putting it on the money, so that helps a lot. Hey, tell us about that long ball that Walker threw you. Well, we had a little bit of a scramble. I ran in and then broke it back out. I ran more of a slot fade, and he threw it up and had to go make a play. Sammy, before I let you go, being a sophomore, your first year on the varsity, uh, tell some of the younger guys out there might be watching uh, what they have to look forward to. How is it different being on the varsity as, like, opposed to freshman football? Well, it's a lot harder. When you're playing freshman football, it's more of a hobby. And then once you get up to varsity, it's a way of life. It's every morning, after school, every day. It's a lot, but it's fun. Awesome. Thank you, Sammy. Second week in a row, our family DNA Player of the Week is Parker Polk. Uh, Parker. And, all right, so we put you running back. All right. Uh, give us a little taste of uh, what you're thinking and uh, how was it getting back in the backfield? Well, it was pretty good. I uh, played freshman year, so it helped a little. And then uh, having the O-line we have, it makes it easy to find the holes and get back into it. All right, so uh, that's something else I wanted to hit on is our offensive line. Um, they are playing well right now. Uh, just put in your words, you know, when you're playing running back and you get the handoff, uh, what are you seeing up front? Uh, you just got to wait for like two seconds, and then there's some huge holes. You could fit a truck through it. They were, they were getting some pancakes and knocking people over. That's right, the studs. So, uh, Parker, I don't know if we're going to let you go back to H full time. So, you might have found your, your semi home back there in the backfield. So, we're proud of you. Thank you so much. All right, our next player is Tristan Sneed. Tristan Sneed's a defensive lineman. He's a junior. Uh, he keeps getting better week to week. Tristan's our discipline DNA player of the week. So, uh, Tristan, talk to us a little bit about what have you been trying to work on to get better from the start of the year to right now? Uh, just to be able to help my team out and do whatever is necessary for my team to get better. Uh, I've been working really hard on keying. Uh, I've been working really hard on keying my blocks and being able to get to the ball as fast as possible. Well, Tristan, you got after quarterbacks the last couple of weeks, man. Uh, you're going to develop a little bit of a reputation of uh, somebody that's not very nice to those guys, and I'm okay with that, all right? Thanks for being here, Tristan. And our last DNA player of the week is Josh Logan. He's the man in the middle. He's our nose guard. He's holding it down. He got our fight DNA player of the week, Josh Logan. All right, so Josh, you played offensive line. You're an all-district offensive lineman, okay? We moved you to nose guard in the spring. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, development that, and some of the challenges that you had to work through the first couple weeks of moving to a new position. Well, first off, D-line's a whole different animal than offensive line. I've really had to work on dropping weight, getting better stamina, losing all the sucking up with my hands that I learned on O-line and learning to extend and push people. But yeah, it's been a grind since 
when did you move me? August? Around the beginning of August, and now it's been a grind. So, uh, so Josh, what's the, what's the most fun thing about playing nose guard? Definitely whooping the semmer and uh, getting them sacks. <laughs> Let's get some more of them. All right, there you go. How about another round for our Mustang DNA players this week? And speaking of our Mustang DNA players, if we're ready, let's go look at the highlights from the game. We'll run through these, and Coach, tell us what we're seeing as we go here. All right, this is going to be early in the game. This is first quarter. Uh, we just got a little inside run to Parker, and that's one of the big holes he was talking about, the offensive line are uh, opening up for him. <clears throat> this, uh, this is just a little inside zone play with Hank Miller leading up on the inside linebacker. Left side of the line just collapsed, and there goes Parker. Here's a good shot of the uh, end zone copy. Oh, look at that blocking downfield right there. Travis Mason finishing it off. And Drew Vig. We, we talk about the offensive line block for uh, first downs and receivers block for touchdowns. So good job by Drew out there on the perimeter. And this was our first touchdown of the game right here. Uh, this is Parker once again, same play. Just a little bit different. Parker's being a little bit patient right there. Breaks a couple tackles. Has to deal with the face mask. Gets hit about the three or four yard line and carries some guys into the end zone. Uh, man, I'd kind of forgotten how good a running back Parker was since he's been out there at receiver, but it's good to see him. Oh, this was really good for us. We've been working on, uh, yeah, we've been working on our onside kick since uh, fall camp. Haven't had an opportunity to do it. When they had the personal foul penalty on the touchdown, it allowed the ball to get moved up. And I'm thinking, you know, if we don't get this, we're still in good shape. Uh, but, man, that's Caden Cook making a heck of a play. And J.D. Rice uh, putting the ball right where it needs to be. That's great execution by our special teams. One more look at it. Watch the big hop. This is what we practice every week. Execute it flawlessly. That was fantastic. Timing is everything on that, isn't it? It is. Oh, new play. Uh, man, Colt was killing them on this play. Uh, this was a new wrinkle we uh, added this week with a little quarterback run game. We're just going to turn the defensive end loose and let Colt read him. Pulls it down. You know, Colt rushed for just right at 100, uh, 100 yards this week and uh, big breakout game for him. Well, there was new people all over the place this week, from quarterback to running back. It was fun to see it, and they really succeeded nicely this week. There's no doubt. Uh, Colt definitely adds a new wrinkle there at the quarterback position that uh, opposing teams are going to have to deal with in the run game. And once again, Parker breaking tackles right and left. Uh, I don't know what to say, man. You're going to see a lot of this in this highlight reel. It's hard to tell if that's number three or number four running yeah. back there, the way he's moving. I'll tell you this. This is the play Sammy was talking about. We call this a whip route. Uh, it's, it's a lot harder to execute than what it looks like. Quarterback does a good job putting it on his frame, and Sammy sticks it in the end zone. All right, second quarter, bring Walker in. Uh, started off with a bang. Uh, just got a little cho outside receiver choice route to Caden Cook. It's a read route. He runs by the cornerback. Walker sees it, throws a nice ball, puts it on the outside shoulder. Caden does the rest. All right, defensive highlights. Here we go. Some of you uh, dads out there might remember the, the play student body left, student body right. We saw a lot of that the other night. Uh, <laughs> You know, um, a lot of quarterback run game, getting a lot of blockers out in front of them. Our defensive players, especially the front guys, did a great job of getting to the ball, uh, just corralling the quarterback and giving him no room to run most of the night. All right, this was uh, getting down to the nitty-gritty. They, they got down on a broken play, uh, got into scoring position, Shut them, out, shut them down, forced a field goal, and then forced a uh, sack right there at the end of the half. So we're up 42-7 to seven at the half. 
Game's somewhat comfortable in hand, but you've got to go to halftime. You've got homecoming activities going on. What was your message to the team at halftime? I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. I stood in there in front of the team, and I told them, guys, you're going to win this game, but I care a lot more about how you're going to win it than the score. I told them, don't look at the scoreboard. I don't care what the score is. All I care about is how we go out there and play the second half. And uh, we went out there and played like it was 0-0. Zero, zero. Third quarter, we were able to get a lot of our subs in. Uh, everybody that practices with us was able to get in the game from the third quarter on. And uh, everybody that stepped across that white line played their tails off and played uh, in a way that would honor all those alumni in the stands. Well, that was good, and it's, you can't underestimate how important it is to get those reps for those young guys and those that don't get to play week after week. So let's go look at the second half and see how they did. All right, so we got uh, the first two series. We left the ones in and uh, started off with a bang. Once again, we got a little inside zone play with Hank leading up on the Mike linebacker. Uh, Parker does the rest, gets to the outside, breaks some tackles. And then uh, next series, we get in there with uh, Reed Watkins, a JV move up. Uh, Reed did a great job running with his pads down. He does this on Thursday nights. He's earned the right to get on the field, and uh, we're all real proud of Reed. Kickoff cover, we did it 11 times the other night. Okay, got a lot of practice at it. Um, and every time we got a little bit better, our coverage unit's playing really well. Our kickoff return unit's playing really well. We're doing just a great job right now on special teams. We hope, you know, we just keep it up. And here's a good look at it from the end zone so you can see everybody filling their lanes correctly yeah, and getting so, to that ball. So we have these bullets, these three bullets in the middle, and their job is to get down there and just wreak havoc. Um, Meshack and Goey's one that's first one down there and makes the tackle. Student body right. Uh, Tackled by a host of Mustangs. It wasn't real, wasn't real fancy, but it was effective in the first half. Gave them a lot of blockers over there. We made a few adjustments and uh, were able to bottle them up the rest of the game. All right, so this is a big deal for us. So this is the third week in a row that we've scored on special teams. Uh, this week it came by a block punt. This is our second block punt of the year. So uh, our guys just keep grinding, keep getting better at the special teams. That's Terrence Ramirez, everybody, uh, scoring his first touchdown of the year. Uh, catches the hitch route, makes a couple guys miss. Uh, I was real happy to see Terrence get in the end zone because he got robbed a little bit early in the game on a uh, longer touchdown pass that was uh, ruled incomplete. Big boys, this is our two old lines, still getting it done. Uh, Reed Watkins getting his pads down and sticking the end zone. That's, that's, that's textbook right there. Our offensive line are all on the, all on the right people. Uh, just big bodies in the way and those running backs doing their thing. Henry S. is on the sack. Henry's a senior linebacker. Uh, he's going to be coming off the edge right here. Henry's got a motor like no other. Uh, I was real proud to see him get a sack. It's in impressive to just watch when you see that there's just really nowhere for them to go. Yep. If, if it's not one Mustang, it's going to be another. So the final comes out at 72 to 10. And uh, final reflections on the game with homecoming. Like I said at the start of the show, Matt, I mean, I'm just so proud that uh, we were able to put on a good showing and make our alumni happy and proud. Um, you know, I guess the most important thing is being 2-0 and in district. Uh, but real, real close second is just um, inspiring our people that are at the game and uh, let them see that all the hard work that our guys have put in uh, is paying off and, and, you know, just walk out of that stadium being proud to be a Mustang. Well, there's a lot to be proud of. Now let's talk about the McKinley and Hutchins, certify the numbers. Let's talk about the offense here. Yeah, very efficient. You know, uh, rushing, anytime you can 
that's that's ten yards of carry, basically, Matt. Is what we got going right here. Uh, we were efficient in the passing game. Uh, four four touchdowns, uh, passing six rushing. You know, that's just a total complete game. That's that's not one player. That's not two players. That's everybody on the offensive unit doing their job. Ones, twos across the board. And here's the defense. They also had a great night. Like you said, they gave up almost no yards of carry if you take away a couple of those plays. Let's talk about the defense. Man, I'm so excited about these guys. They keep getting better every week. You know, early in the year, we weren't happy with where we were defensively. Our defensive players weren't happy. Our defensive coaches weren't happy. But they just keep practicing hard and grinding and getting tighter as a unit. Um, they're getting better every week. I can't wait for playoff time. I can't wait to see the unit and how they're playing at that point. Um, I think we got a good chance, Matt. Well, you talk about the playoffs. You're halfway there. Three and two, one and one in. I'm sorry, three and two, two and zero oh in district. And uh, now we got Fort Worth Southwest headed down to Fort Worth Clark Stadium Friday night, seven o'clock. Tell us what we're looking for with Fort Worth Southwest. You know, uh, an athletic team. Um, they lost a heartbreaker last uh, weekend to Creekview, um, 21-20. I think they're a pretty equally matched team is what Creekview was. Uh, probably have a little better athletes at some places. Um, we're going to need to play sound football defensively. Uh, we're going to have to tackle well. If we do that, I think we'll be fine. Offensively, you know, the things they do on defense, they don't want you to run the football. They put a lot of people around the football. We'll see how it goes. If we can't run the football, we'll be happy to throw it. You know, um, I don't know, Matt. It will be interesting. I, I'm excited to get to there. I know that. Well, that'll be Friday night at 7 o'clock. you got another game coming up with a tough week after that. So talk about some of the challenges you'll have over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so I talked to the guys this morning that the next two weeks are critical for us. We're playing two good football teams in Southwest and Northside, and uh, we're playing Northside on a short week. So it's going to be two business trips. We're heading over to Fort Worth. Um, you know, I told them it's, it's not real, I don't know, it's not real exciting, not real sexy sometimes when you go over there to Clark Stadium because there's not going to be a lot of people. But it's a business trip, and we got work to do. If we want to have fun in November and December, we got to take care of business right now. So uh, it's going to be exciting. We got to put our nose to the grindstone and just get some work done over the next two weeks. Well, that'll be Friday night. It'll start off 7 o'clock Friday morning with Breakfast of Champions. Guest is going to be a special guest and a surprise, so you got to come to find out who we're going to have this week. Anything else, Coach, before we sign off? I just want to uh, just thank everybody for showing up tonight. It's a huge crowd. We thank you all so much. Uh, go Mustangs. All right, let's have one more hand here from our Bottle Cap Alley fans. Special thanks to Kim Assad and Trey Bell and everyone who's been a part of this one. We'll see you next week. Yeah.
on the brow Living our commitment Friday nights show us how This is Mustang Football.